Welcome back. So we're talking about the Fourier series and how we can approximate functions f of x, uh, periodic functions, with an infinite sum of sines and cosines of increasingly high frequencies. Okay, so this is the basis of the uh, fast Fourier transform and lots of modern techniques um, in, in compression and numerical solutions of differential equations. And in the last few lectures, I've shown you how to do this with cosines and sines. Now I'm going to show you how to do this with uh, complex valued functions. So f of x doesn't have to be real. This could be a complex valued function as well. And in that case, what we're going to do is we're going to write this as a sum, an infinite sum, from k equals minus infinity to infinity, so this is a little bit different than before, of some complex coefficient ck e to the i kx. And you'll notice that I went back to two pi periodic functions defined from negative pi to pi because my notation will be a little bit easier here. Uh, and I want you to recall um, kind of the uh, Euler's expansion of this. e to the i kx is just cosine kx plus i sine kx. Okay, and this is pretty easy to see if you just take the Taylor series expansion of e to the uh, e to the x and you plug in i k x. Then, if you collect all of the real terms, you'll recover the uh, cosine series. And if you recover all of the terms that have an i on the coefficient, you'll recover the sine Taylor expansion. Okay, so this is what we're going to do. We're going to talk about uh, now the Fourier series in terms of complex. Uh, a complex basis, e to the i kx, where k can go from negative infinity to infinity, integers from minus infinity to infinity. If you wanted to, you could, of course, expand this out. You could say that um, my sum goes from k equals minus infinity to infinity. Um, you could say that my, my coefficients, ck, are just some alpha k plus i beta k. Okay, no big deal. And then I could plug in my, my uh, Euler's formula here for e to the i kx is just cosine kx plus i sine kx. Okay, and if you wanted to, you could expand this out. You could collect all of the real parts and all of the imaginary parts, uh, and you'd have some representation for the real and the imaginary parts of your function f. And if you were dealing with real valued function f, uh, real valued functions f, you could derive that there are some constraints on these coefficients. Uh, in fact, I'll just write it out. So um, I'll write out in parentheses here that um, c k equals the complex conjugate of c minus k if f of x is real. Okay, and you can derive that out yourself. You can expand this out and basically try to kill all of the imaginary terms, and you'll arrive at this, this relationship here. It's pretty simple. Okay, so that's, that's a nice uh, expression. This is kind of a nice, a more compact representation of the Fourier series than we had before. Before we were writing it as sines and cosines. Uh, this is both more compact and it expresses uh, complex functions as well as real functions. So it's, it's more general also. But now what I want to do is I want to convince you that these functions e to the i k x define an orthogonal basis uh, for my function space, for my space of all functions. I want, to, I want to show you that these functions for different integer k's are orthogonal to each other and form an infinite dimensional vector space, a basis for this vector space. Okay, And that's something I didn't do before. I'm going to do now. Um, we're going to, uh, to derive this. Okay, So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to define, uh, let's actually just do it right here. Let's say that this is defined to be some function psi k. I'm going to define my function psi k to equal e to the i k x. Okay, and I'm going to say that this set of all psi k's is a basis. So each of these psi's is kind of a direction in function space that's orthogonal to every other psi k. Okay, and the way we're going to do that is by we're actually going to compute the inner product of psi j with psi k, psi j, psi k, and we're going to show that this inner product is zero unless j equals k. That's what it means for these vectors to be orthogonal, these functions to be orthogonal. Okay, so uh, writing this out, I'm just going to use this uh, inner product in Hilbert space from above. So this is the integral from negative pi to pi. 
of psi j times the complex conjugate of psi k. So psi j is just e to the i uh, j x. i is square root of negative 1, j is an index, an integer, times uh, the complex conjugate of e to the i k x, and complex conjugate of e to the i something is e to the minus i that thing dx. Good. Okay, so that's not too bad. This is just the inner product that we've defined earlier of my basis function j with basis function k is my integral e to the i j x uh, e to the i minus i k x. And now what I can do is I can put all of those exponents under the same, the same exponent. I can multiply these and add the exponents. And so that's going to equal, uh, again, integral minus pi to pi e to the i j minus k x dx. Good. Nothing fancy going on here. And we actually know how to integrate this. This is not a hard function to integrate. e to the anything x, if I integrate it, is um, 1 over that coefficient times the function itself. Okay, so this is actually pretty easy for me to, to write out. Maybe I'll do this in blue. Okay, so this is uh, 1 over i times j minus k times uh, e to the i j minus k x. And remember, this is a definite integral, so we're actually evaluating this from minus pi to pi. So we're evaluating this uh, from minus pi to pi. Okay, and this is where I think it gets kind of interesting, is that this function, uh, j minus k is just, this is just an integer. Okay, this is e to the i integer x. And so if I plug in pi and minus pi for any of those integers, let's, let's just say j minus k is, is 2, okay? So j minus k is 2. e to the i 2x, if I evaluate it at pi or minus pi, I get the same thing because this function is 2 pi periodic. e to the e to the i 2 pi is equal to e to the minus i 2 pi. They're the same function. They both equal, uh, equal each other, okay? So this equals zero if j does not equal to k. So if j does not equal k, then this is a positive or negative integer. This is just an integer, e to the i integer x. And if I plug in pi or minus pi, those will be equal to each other. That e to the you know i integer pi and e to the minus i integer pi will be equal, and when I subtract them, they cancel out. Okay, so I get zero. These really are orthogonal if j does not equal k. But if j does equal k, so let's say j equals k, then I get um, it's a little bit funny because then this becomes zero and I'm dividing by zero. But you can use any number of um, mathematical formulas. You can use L'Hopital's rule uh, to kind of take the limit and, and, and remove those. You can think about expanding this in the Taylor series and dividing the j minus k out. And what you get out is just an x term evaluated at pi minus x evaluated at minus pi. And what's pi minus minus pi? We get 2 pi if and only if j equals k. Okay, so I'll, I'll let you work through the details of this yourself, that if j equals k, then you can, in fact, evaluate this. And what you get is just uh, x evaluated at pi and minus pi, and they add up to, to 2 pi. Okay, good. So what that shows is that these functions, psi j and psi k, are, in fact, orthogonal to each other. So um, if j is not equal to k, the inner product is 0. If j is equal to k, then they have a, a non-trivial inner product of 2 pi. In fact, that's the, um, the norm squared of psi j with itself is 2 pi. That's how you, you compute that. And so what that means is that these functions, these uh, psi k e to the i k x functions, provide an orthogonal uh, basis for my function space, for my Hilbert space of functions, okay? And remember, this is a lot like what we are used to in, um, in, in uh, regular vector space. If I have like an x and a y vector direction, we, we've done this before, and I have uh, some vector f, then the way I compute this vector f is to take the inner product of f, so I'm just going to say vector f equals inner product of f with x in the x direction, okay, 
plus inner product of f with y in the y direction. Okay, really simple. This is, you've done this forever. I'm assuming x and y are unit norm vectors, so I don't have to divide by the norm or anything like that. And so going back to our formula here, that's exactly what we have here. These coefficients ck are just the inner product of f with psi k. Okay, so I'm going to write this uh, as an infinite sum, k equals minus infinity to infinity of my, um, there really should be a 1 over 2 pi here, so let me just make this 1 over 2 pi. This whole thing equals 1 over 2 pi, sum from minus uh, infinity to infinity, of the inner product of f of x with psi k in the psi k direction. Okay, and this is my ck, and this is my e to the i k x function. Okay, so this infinite sum, this complex valued Fourier series can be written as a projection, as a sum of f projected onto each of these orthogonal basis directions. That's the component, how much of f is in that psi k direction times that psi k vector. And I'm dividing by 1 over 2 pi because I have to normalize um, for, for the norm of that, that vector. Okay, So I think that's a really, really cool and geometrically intuitive way of thinking about the Fourier series is that my co cosines and sines, or if I want to think in complex space, my e to the i k x's form an orthogonal basis with, in which I can represent all functions. Okay, so it's just like a vector space, like a regular vector space we're used to, except there are infinitely many directions. It's not just x and y, there's psi 1, psi 2, all the way up to psi infinity and all the way down to psi negative infinity. There's an infinite uh, set of these functions, an infinite basis in which I can represent, it's an orthogonal basis in which I can represent any function f of x. Okay, so we're going to use this to approximate functions. We're going to think about uh, what could go wrong when we're approximating functions, maybe with discontinuities. Uh, and then we're going to derive the Fourier transform integral. All right, thank you.